Okay, I think you're on the right track there. So you, um, you remember that the work that would be done there would be the area under the curve. But because this is a straight line, it shouldn't be too hard to find the area. Well, we can do that by splitting this up into a triangle and a rectangle. Good. So for the triangle, you had... Oh. Or is that what you did? What did you do? I mean, it is, but it's just 2.5 knots. Sorry. I wasn't quite following. What, what did you try? I just, I did, I did um, 4 times 1 instead of 2 times 1. Okay. So it's just... 2.5, not 4.5, I think. Okay, so we'll think of it as a triangle and a rectangle. Yeah. So for the triangle, the area is 1 half the base times the height. So the base is 2. And how high is the height? 0. 0.5. 0. 0.5 atmospheres. Mm -hmm. And so the area of the triangle is 0.5 cubic meter atmospheres. And then the rectangle, is that what you got? Mm -hmm. Well, the rectangle has a height of one atmosphere and a width of two cubic meters, four minus two. That would give you two cubic meters times atmospheres. So the total work that's done by would be two plus 0.5, 2.5. Cubic meters times atmospheres. Um, which doesn't now we're not quite done here yeah, because these are not standard units. What units do we want this to come out in? We want it to be in Pascals. Careful, we're trying to solve for work. What would work come out in? I, I see oh. what you're saying. Um, we want the work to come out in joules, yeah. but we can't, we can't assume this is joules because we're not using standard units. Yeah. So this is a case where we do need to do a unit conversion. Mm -hmm. And basically the reason is, why did we not need the unit conversion before? Because we had two different pressure terms. Um, so multiplying one by a conversion ratio would just be canceled by multiplying the other by a conversion ratio. But here, the pressure only appeared once in each formula. Uh, and therefore, you're definitely not, not going to get something in, in, that's going to come out right um, if we just deal with the original units. Again, the other way to put it is we want this to come out in joules, but it's not going to come out in joules if we use atmospheres. Um, well, we have to just translate from atmospheres now into pascals. You're right. Um, you have your textbook with you. You can look at that conversion ratio. Should be on the inside front cover. Unfortunately, they gave it to us in kilopascals. Mm -hmm. How many pascals would that be? Uh, 101,300. I would actually maybe just write this in the inside cover. This is worth just having. One atmosphere is 1.01 times 10 to the fifth. Actually, on the test, oh, on the test, he actually gave you that conversion ratio. So you would have been given that conversion ratio on the test. Mm -hmm. So our conversion ratio is 1.01 times 10 to the fifth pascals. So does that mean I should multiply this by 1.01 times 10 to the fifth, or divide it? Um, you Take your time, you can work that out on paper. Okay. Remember that we need to convert out of atmospheres and into pascals. Mm -hmm. That looks good. Okay. So you wrote down the conversion ratio. Well, to cancel out the atmospheres, we want to put the atmospheres on the bottom of the conversion ratio and the pascals on the top. Mm -hmm. Well, we know that the number one goes with atmospheres, and 1.01 1 
times 10 to the fifth goes with Pascal. So it looks like we'll need the calculator again to do this next step. just one. We can just ignore that. We're really just putting in another factor of 10 to the fifth. So we went from 2.5 to 2.5 times 10 to the fifth. Uh, and now, now we can assume that it's going to come out in joules. Uh -huh. We can assume that cubic meters times pascals is joules because those are all standard units. Um, so now this would be in joules. Let's make sure we're getting our signs right here. The question was asking us for the work that was done by the gas. Yeah. Well, would we expect that to be positive here? No. Oh, I was expecting it to be positive, but I was wrong. Good, I was just asking that as an idle question. <laughs> but um, find the work done in the process from A to B. Oh, careful, we're going from A to B. So from A to B, is the gas doing work or is work being done on it? How do you know? Because the volume is increasing? Yeah. In order for it, so basically the gas is pushing the piston up. Well, that means the gas has to do work. The gas has to do work to push the piston and to, uh -huh. to get more volume. So work is being done by the gas. So now the question was asking us for the work done by the gas. So should our answer be positive or negative? I think it should be negative. No? I thought that work done on was positive and work done by is negative because it's being released. Yeah, so, yeah, that actually, uh, we, should, we should stop and talk about that a little bit more. So, um, this gas really is doing work. So, what's the work that's being done by the gas? 2.5 times 10 to the fifth oh, joules. I see what you're saying. And then the work done on it would be negative. That's right. I had a little speech in that other series of videos where maybe I didn't explain this very well, but I talked about the difference between a common sense view and how a math mathematician would look at it. Yeah. So, let's say the question was asking us for. What is the work done by the gas from A to B? Well, the answer would be positive 2.5 times 10 to the fifth joules. But let's say you asked, what was the work that was done on the gas from A to B? Well, a common sense person would say, well, there was no work done on the gas. There was work done by the gas. But a mathematician would say, well, I can say that there was work done on the gas. I would just say it's negative work. We could say that from A to B, the work done by the gas was positive 2.5 times 10 to the fifth joules. That just means that it really was doing work. Or a mathematician would say that the work done on the gas was negative 2.5 times 10 to the fifth joules. That's just a fancy way of saying that work was really being done by the gas. So I think maybe I gave the wrong impression in the other video series. Uh, I would, you don't want to think that work done by is always positive or always negative. Uh, maybe what's confusing you is you're thinking about This equation here, maybe, maybe this is not the problem. Well, we know that we would subtract the work done by the gas to figure out delta u. But that doesn't mean the work done by the gas is negative. I'm sorry, you were going to say? I, just, I wrote it down from your video. You were talking about a graph that looked like this. Right. And you said that moving in this direction, the gas is expanding, so work done by it is less than zero. And then Whoops. Uh, let's see, either um, your notes are wrong, or maybe my video is wrong. So um, if I said that, I shouldn't have said that. So yeah, gas expanding. And then here, I guess that's where you're talking about the equation, so that's different. Right. Uh, maybe you misunderstood, or maybe I just misspoke. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so you want to go back and fix that. Okay. If work, so what I, would, what I should have said is, when the gas is expanding, the work done by the gas is positive. And the work done on the gas would come out negative. Yeah. When the gas is compressing, well, that's because actually work is being done on the gas. So that comes out positive. And if you insist on talking about the work that's done by the gas, 
that has to come out negative. Okay. So that's what I should have said anyway. All right. So this particular problem was, so what, what was the answer? What was the work done by the gas from A to B? Positive 2.5 times That's right. However, you certainly could have been asked, what's the work done on the gas? And then the answer would be negative. So earlier we said that the work is the area under the curve. But you need to make a note to yourself, the area under the curve only tells you the magnitude of the work. It's up to us to get the right sign. We have to figure out the sign on the work, and that depends on whether we're trying to figure out the work done on or by the gas. Areas always come out positive, but the answer might be negative depending on what the question was asking us for. So earlier you noticed that there's no special process for an upward sloping straight line. But now you also notice that it does make it easy to find the work, because it just gives us a triangle on top of a rectangle, so we can use high school geometry. <laughs>